Welcome in everyone. This is Julie Maxson, the main stamper. It's Tuesday. Surprise! It's not Monday today. Um, I did not do a Halloween card class last night. I took the evening off and I am here on Tuesday instead with you. So surprise for the switch up, but thank you so much for joining me for our class. We are featuring the fit Fitting Florets collection today, which is a brand new set of merchandise that Stampin' Up! has just released to all the customers today, November 1st. And check out this first card that we're going to make tonight. How beautiful is this? And it's a fun fold, if I can show you that way, right? It's a different kind of fold. So this is one out of three of the cards that we're going to do together using this amazing suite. I love this one so much. Now, demonstrators have had this in their hands for a good month now, and I have had it in my box for a good month now, and today was the first I actually pulled it out and played with it. Uh, so I wanted to showcase this amazing collection and then talk to you about some of it is limited in quantity and limited in time and some of it is available in the new catalog that's coming out in January which is only two months away so make sure you're saying hi as you jump in I love to know who's watching me in my craft room and also to make sure obviously that everything is working properly because Tech and I we're getting to be better friends but um, it's it's that slow build here that we got going on so let me get you over to my workspace and I will show you this amazing collection I would love to know um, I know there's some demonstrators on here as well let me know if you guys have this yet if you've loved it if you've used it or if if like me it's been sitting in a package so over to my workspace we go so this is the brand new brand new product and there's a lot to talk about so I'm gonna chat a little bit about it before we get into our three cards tonight the first stamp set the framed florets which is photopolymer so of course it's the clear stamps in here framed florets is going to be bundled or are also sold separately with the framed florets dies and these are the dies there's lots of great dies here lots of good oval options which is really nice and of course it's very flowery as well so the dies and this stamp set will be available in the January to May 2023 mini catalog it's so weird to say 2023 these will be coming back so these ones you're gonna have opportunity aplenty to get them. Let's talk about what's not coming back and what is limited time. Limited time is the framed and festive stamp set. And of course it's, it's perfect for Christmas. It's all Christmas sentiments. Love it. Okay, it's not in the mini catalog now. This is a separate item. It's item number 160888. And this one is red rubber um, stamp set. So here's your red rubber stamps. And I have two of them mounted up. We're gonna actually be using two of these tonight on cards. So if you're doing your math correctly, yes, that is two out of three are Christmas cards because I love Christmas. All right, so this is the stamp set. It is available, limited time, limited quantity. When it's gone, it's gone. So if you're interested in getting this and having some really cute sentiments, you need to grab this ASAP. Don't wait. Things sell out and then people are really sad. Other things that are available in this collection right now are these really fantastic gold adhesive backed swirls. And they have that, oh, they, they're kind of like swirly in nature. You probably can't really see it in the um, through the packaging and on my camera with my light and everything in here. But they're really, um, they're really amazing little tiny dots. And, and it looks like there's not much here, but there's actually 75 of these little gems in this packaging. Now this again is when it's sold out, it's sold out. Gold is great color for um, Christmas cards coming up. So if you're interested in the adhesive back swirls, it's item 161822. They are also, you can just check the fitting florets um, new collection uh, in my online shop as well. And then the last thing that is um, going to be limited in quantity is the paper. And this is gorgeous paper. This is called Fitting Florets Designer Series Paper, of course, right? I have a package I haven't even opened yet, but I have um, the 12 by 12 here trying to show you the different patterns and designs. So we've got pink, obviously, and you can see floral behind me. Um, so we've got these fun, really fun colors. There's lots of blues. Here's some soft succulent. You can't go wrong with that, right? Some blues and greens. And then we've got um, like a petal pink here, or I think this might be Blushing Bride actually. Blushing Bride with Evening Evergreen. And this one is very popular. You may have seen this quite a bit with Christmas cards right now. There's a nice little gingham check in the Evening Evergreen. Love it. And then I, I'm a fan. These are my colors, right? Blue and green. I love these colors together. Now we've got this fun, almost like a basket weave pattern here, which may be making you a little bit dizzy, but I can see masculine cards with this too. 
And then we've got a very, very pretty floral with the pinks and the blues. So very springy here. And then we've got this really fun blue. This is the bash, uh, bashful blue. I believe that is bashful blue. And again, um, some great floral patterns on the back. So you can see that um, a lot of these are springy themed, uh, but they're only available now until the um, end of the ordering period, I believe is January 4th, or until sold out. So it may sell, it may sell out. You just, we don't know these things. I wanted to point out that this paper right here, this designer series paper coordinates with a die. And I think it's this one. Pretty sure it's this one right here. So this paper right here, so these flowers that are kind of in this, this one right here, this pink and green, uh, you can actually die cut these out and not have to do any stamping. Now, of course, the dies also fit um, stamps, right? So we have, besides the ovals and besides the sprigs, we have dies that are going to cut out stamped flowers. And we've got uh, two dies. We're actually going to be using these ones today in our card. There's a nice kind of long sprig here. And there is, of course, a die to cut this one out. And the, um, the leaves get cut out with... We've got the little guy here. We've got this tiny little sprig here. So those are the two leaf dies. And this one right here also gets, I love stamp and, stamp and die cut, right? Stamp and die cut. And these ones are open design. So you get to do a little bit of coloring. We're gonna do a little bit of coloring. This one has some really nice thank you, beautiful birthday, friend, special day, celebrate. Um, just some really sweet little um, sentiments in them. Perfect for springtime. And that's exactly where this, uh, bundle is going to end up is in the spring catalog so i just wanted to take a kind of a peek into that uh, whole suite because i'm not actually using every tiny section of every tiny part of my bundle here but again this is our very first card and it is a fun fold so you can see here how fun it really is now i have uh, some card parts and pieces so we're going to start assembling this one i did not completely cut my card base because I wanted to show you how I'm going to cut my card base. Now, if you didn't want to cut your card base, uh, you don't have to. If you get this card kit in the mail from me with a qualifying order this week, I guess we didn't talk about that at all. Um, all of my classes are available uh, to watch for free. And if you place an order with me in my online store, this uh, host code is 773-YEY33. This is good through Sunday evening. And if you order $35 or more, you're gonna get the three card kits that I'm working on tonight. With $50 and more, you're gonna get the card kits and a free gift. If you're spending over 150, be your own host and earn your host rewards. Um, so we have that going on. I just wanted to show you that. But your card kit, when you get it in the mail, I'm actually going to have your card base cut. So it's not gonna be a full card base. This is a full card base. So if you're just watching at home and thinking, wow, I don't wanna cut my card base, you could actually use uh, a full card base front and you're going to get basically the same result it, it doesn't look like it's going to open differently until you actually open it okay so you don't have to ever create fun folds but if you wanted to try it out it is a lot of fun so i'm just going to show you that i've got your basic a2 ca uh, card base here it's five and a half by uh, eight and a half scored at four and a quarter right and then i'm going to actually just cut away an inch and a half off of it doesn't even matter what end because when we're done we're going to have a shorter card base and that's going to be how this is going to open like so so this is a scrap it's going to be good for another project of course i keep all my scraps i keep a lot of my scraps actually so here we are we have our little card base and we can actually start doing some assembly now I've, I've already cut some of the great paper you can see the pretty patterns on either side and I've designed this card so that we have some cardstock on each section so we've got it on the front flap here which is a little bit smaller now that we've chopped off an inch and a half of it and then as we open this up this is actually going to go on the inside and I chose to keep the pink and the blue facing up because I thought they were just really pretty colors. So I'm just going to go ahead and line that up here. And you can see that when it's closed, it almost looks like you can't tell that it would open in a different manner. Now, I did cut a piece of white that's going to go in here so you can stamp on this and sign this. And this gets hidden by this flap right here. I'm just going to go ahead and glue mine in now and show you that you definitely want to snug your crease line with this one because you don't want it to go too far over. You want it to be 
behind this line right here so that you don't see the white um, until you open it up. So that's what the inside looks like and here is in the closed position. And how fun is that, right? It's, I mean, it's just when people get cards that open interestingly or they're, they're cool folds or something, I mean, that just ups the ante on your, your um, reputation as a skilled card maker, right? All right, so let me grab out, let me see, we've got layers here. One's gonna get embossed. We've got some die cutting. We've got a little bit of stamping to do. So let's do our stamping. We're actually gonna stamp these really cute little flowers. And we're going to do that with some memento ink because we are going to be coloring with our blender pens. So our memento ink is a water-based ink. And I'm just going to stamp on some scrap paper. I've got a couple of flowers here. These are two different sizes. And I actually have a third one that I've already die cut because there are only two flower dies. So rather than continuously cutting here, I'm actually going to trim my paper. I'm saving this scrap. This is actually big enough to do a whole nother flower on and I am scrap savvy. All right, I'm going to bring in the big boss machine here and we're going to do a little bit of embossing and die cutting next. So let's get going on all of that good stuff. Actually, I'm going to do the embossing first. So on my card, which is probably really hard to see, actually, I think you can see it now. I did emboss this white piece that's right here and I used this nice little floral embossing folder and I forgot to look at the name of it so I'm not really even sure what it's called but it is quite florally in nature and this is just a regular embossing folder it is not a 3d fold folder so we actually need the base plate and both of the clear plates and I'm always putting my hinged edge in first. Now, if this was a 3D folder, I would not be using my clear plates. I would be using the, um, I would be using the gray number four plate. And that works really nicely with the 3D embossing folders. I'm just getting everything moved around here. So here's the embossing folder. Again, this has this nice little line here that you can line your paper up. And this just gives us a nice floral print. Uh, which is kind of just a nice little background print. So we're gonna set that aside. We don't need that right now, but we do need to bring in our amazing ovals. And I forgot to even talk about the amazing ovals. We have three different options with this set. So we're not gonna use this one right now. So I'm gonna put this one aside, but we are gonna use this one right now. And um, there's then there's the third one too. And I will be using all of them tonight. So this one is really awesome because it does two jobs at the same time. And I actually have to run this through twice. I need to get one in blue and one in white. So let me get this back over here and run through. Then when I pull it out, you're gonna see how awesome this is. I love this. Okay, so what happens is after I die cut it, we of course have scraps, we get an oval frame that almost has little, little notches all the way through it, and we get a separate oval. And that's where we get to mix and match. So on my card here, you can see I've got a blue frame and I've got the white center. So I'm gonna run this through one more time with Knight of Navy cardstock so that I can mix and match my outline and my inner oval and of course as you're doing this we're going to be saving all kinds of paper for other projects and so here is our blue one so again same situation we've got the outline and we've got the inner one and we're actually using from this card we're actually using the blue outline with the white center but i can save this mock-up this white one with blue for another time so that's really awesome you're getting like extra value uh, using that this die because it's kind of like a two for one die all right next I'm going to just bring in my little framelit dies here for these pretty little flowers and line these guys up best I can there's one and two I feel like this one maybe isn't quite correct I have a harder time with the big one for some reason there we go I think we're good here all right, so here we go. We're going to do our little flowers. And I think we're good for die cutting for this card. Now we're just going to do some stamping and some coloring and then some assembly. I can get my dies off of there. We'd be good to go. 
flowers, flowers. Put my little dies back on their magnet sheets because it helps me to not lose everything. Especially when I knock things over, which does happen from time to time. All right, I'm going to actually um, bring in my three little flowers here and some blender pens. Now these are oil based, so they work really well with our memento, which is water based. And I'm going to bring back in my little card sample. So you can see the pretty little flowers here. I did them in blue and pink. And these are super, super quick to color in. Um, and you don't have to be super fussy about it either. I did these, um, the little guys in balmy blue, and I'm just going through really quickly with the light balmy blue and just adding color. So there you go, done, right? They're not perfectly done yet, but that's okay because I'm coming back in with the dark balmy blue. And I'm actually gonna kind of cover the ends. I'm gonna go kind of around the middle a little bit. So wherever there's lines in the stamp naturally, kind of like the shading area. And we can actually create that two-tone effect with our blenders because we're using two different colors of ink. So there's that one done. And then I'm just gonna do this one real quick. Just kind of scribble on some color where it needs it. And that's done. So those are my blue flowers. Super pretty, right? Now I'm gonna do the pink and I've chosen Flirty Flamingo. So I'm gonna start with the light. Again, I'm gonna do the the light first, just kind of sweep in some color real quickly. And if you are like a super detailed colorer, you can definitely take your time and enjoy. I'm kind of like a fast, let's get it done, move on, what else we got to do kind of colorer. So I don't always take the most time in coloring. And I like when you can just get something done really quickly and it looks fantastic like this one does. I'm using the dark, Daffodil Delight for the center. And here's my pink. So you can kind of see two different colors in there. I've got the light and the dark color. And that's how quick it was to color these flowers for this card. So super fast, super quick and easy. Love it. All right, so let's do some assembly here. And we also still have to stamp the sentiment. Let's get that stamped next, actually. I've got Knight of Navy ink. So we're uh, keeping that nice Knight of Navy going. And I'm looking for my sentiment that says, wishes for a beautiful birthday. So this one, um, a lot of the papers, which I showed earlier, if you missed that, you can go back and catch the beginning later. A lot of the papers in this paper pack are actually more springy and flowery, right? There's, they don't really look very Christmassy and yet we will be making two Christmas cards today. So just wanted to throw that out there. All right, I have this up a little bit higher, I think this time, which is kind of how I wanted it. I usually do my first card and then wish that I had made some changes to it. So as I do this live, I'm actually sometimes tweaking it just a little bit. So there is our wishes for a beautiful birthday. We got that all set. And now we can actually come back through and do our, our final assembly here get our card put together. Now again, um, you will be getting in your card kit all of the de designer series paper, all of these die cuts, you will get an embossed piece here, you'll get all of these things that you need. Um, you're not going to have stamped flowers. I will include a little bit of white paper. You can definitely add some flowers in with whatever you have. If you have the set, you can certainly stamp and die cut your own flowers. But this is a really easy card to actually use any flowers on. And you, you can even use, if you have punches with little flowers, that would work too. I'm just adding the embossed piece right here to this Knight of Navy cardstock. And this is gonna come on the front of our card, but we have to be really careful because this card has to open and there's gonna be overlap here. So we don't wanna glue the whole thing down or this card will actually never open. Uh, let's see. And I like uh, tear and tape if I can find it. Do us a little uh, dig through my bag over here. All right, tear and tape. And this is what I'm looking at. I'm looking at putting this piece right here um, and kind of evenly distributing it from this blue designer series paper to the pink designer series paper because I want it to still be in the middle of the card and I need tear and tape that's no longer than this as well. So I'm just going to kind of put my fingers here for placement and I'm going to put some tear and tape down on the um, actual designer paper in two spots and I know that as I put this on it will hold it exactly where I need it and the tear and tape is really strong so you don't have to use a ton of it of course if you're using glue or if you're using um, 
tape runner that works perfectly well too. I like the tear and tape because it's super strong. I'm going to actually make sure that I'm holding this down because it tends to bounce up a little bit. I want to hold it flat. And one more time, I'm going to kind of line this up and make sure I got it exactly where I want it. And then once I'm secure, there we go. I'm going to push that down and then we still open. That's mm -hmm. the good news. We are still opened. So let me just check messages here really quickly and make sure everything's doing good. Okay, I see Jess, Jane, Lori, Connie, just a quick peek in, hi, hi. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that we were doing well here. All right, so there we go, and then we're gonna play with our ovals now. Now this one has so much uh, detail in it that you have to be really careful when you're adding your adhesive. So just a little bit, just, this is gonna be like very little bit of glue kind of along the inner edge, if possible because the outer edge has more of the open cuts in it. So just a little bit of glue, doesn't take much to hold this down. And I'm gonna center this right here over top of my embossed piece. And if you have too much glue, of course it's gonna ooze out everywhere. So just be very delicate with your glue. And, and then this is what, oh, so pretty, right? I love this color combination. All right, now we're gonna just glue this in nice and flat. So just gonna add some adhesive there and then put this in here in our, so we've got that nice little white sentiment, wishes for a beautiful birthday. It's November 1st. Happy birthday, November friends. I'm so excited if you're having a birthday this month. I do have a, um, it's kind of new. I think I started it last month. It's called my, I call it my birthday club. It's a free club. And if you have a birthday during whatever month you have a birthday in, I offer you 20% off your Stampin' Up! order in my online store. You just have to contact me so that I can help you pay for whatever products that you pick out. So if it's your birthday month, happy birthday. Feel free to shop anytime this month with me and I will treat you a little bit while you're celebrating. Now, as I'm gonna add on these little adhesive flowers, I'm actually going to put dimensionals. These are the minis, mini dimensionals, one on the back of each one. So these are gonna be popped up here a little bit. And I am going to kind of layer them on. Now my die cuts actually have more white on one end than the other. So I'm actually going to push the white part of my die cut, if you can kind of see it on this card, up here where it meets the white so it's less obvious. So the darker line is gonna be down here where the, um, the, the navy is so that it kind of doesn't quite look like I missed as many, you know, didn't die cut it quite as straight as it could have been. Um, and I'm, I'm good with that. As long as I can kind of manipulate this a little bit, and pop those in there we are good and fun fact i wanted to let you know earlier today so i use these minis because they kind of um, i can fit them in easily and layer them over top of each other when i did my card earlier um, i actually wanted to readjust these little these little uh, flowers so i pulled them off because it's it was pretty easy to pull off these little mini these little mini dimensionals. And then I reattached them with a little bit more glue because they lost some of their stick once I pulled them off the paper. And um, once I did that, I added a little bit of glue and slid them back on there and good to go, which is really awesome. So you can very carefully undo things if you if you need to. And then just re-glue them. You don't have to throw out, if, you're, if your dimensionals are still in pretty good shape, don't throw them out and get new ones. You can repurpose them. Just add a little bit of adhesive. Maybe even a glue dot would work, I'm thinking. So I have some of this beautiful white um, crinkle ribbon. I love this ribbon very, very much. And it just kind of gives this nice little look here to all this white that's going on. I'm gonna put this little bow on here with a glue dot. Actually, I probably should trim up my ends before I get too crazy here. There we go. And now we're gonna add in that little glue dot and throw our bow right up here underneath the flowers. And by raising them up, it kind of gives us room to kind of tuck that little piece of the bow right underneath there, right? So it kind of like blends right in there beautifully. I feel like there's ribbon here. And here's our first card. This is what she looks like. So this was my first one. Here's my second one. I did raise this up a little bit and now I'm kind of wishing maybe I hadn't raised it up quite as much. I'm not sure. I'm just, a, I'm a critic of my work, right? But I'm sure that if anyone had a birthday and they got this card in the mail, they would think it was pretty beautiful. So there is our first card, easy peasy. 
and a nice birthday card. And this is the only card I've shown you so far tonight, so I'm really excited to share with you as we get into the next card. We're gonna talk about Christmas cards. Let me just clean up here for a hot second. We'll move this away, but not too far, because of course we have to compare them all at the end. I need to know what your favorite was. All right, so let me move this out of the way. And we're gonna bring in our next card. I hope you guys are excited for the next card. Now this one is very Christmassy and it's also pretty gold and green. I love these colors together. This one uses the framed and festive stamp set and I've got the sentiment, may this season be filled with peace and joy. I thought that um, some of these are like fa la tis a season to be jolly. So some of them are, are um, more whimsical, but then you've got, um, this one is very mature, right? The Noels and have yourself a merry little Christmas from our home to yours. So some of them are like, are um, just different sentiments, right? Different feelings for different cards. And I felt that this card needed kind of a stately sentiment. So I chose that sentiment. Also, it fits really nicely here in our, um, our little frame. So let's talk about all of our frames and we're gonna get going on this one. All right, so we're doing Evening Evergreen here, which you can see evening evergreen card base. I always like to have lots of matting. I'm a heavy matting kind of girl. Um, when you get this card kit in the mail, you'll have a white insert as well. So I do have one for the outside, one for the inside. And then I'm taking advantage of the beautiful soft succulent evening evergreen designer paper that is in the catalog. So obviously the back side, super springy. And then this side, we got that nice rich green going on. And I'm actually just gonna go ahead and start gluing some of these layers on. Now this paper that I'm using first has these like little white berries, probably little holly berry type berries, right? And I have seen um, people, I wanna make sure I've got it the right side up. I've seen um, other demonstrators use this designer series paper and then color the berries into in red so that they're very red on the back of the card um, rather than having them be white but for my card i really want it to be white and green with gold and i didn't i wasn't sure if i wanted to mix red in there so i didn't not to say that i might not try it in the future but for now I did not. And so we've got this beautiful layer here. Um, so it's easy to add the designer series paper to the white layer uh, before it goes onto the card front. And again, I just, I am such a fan of the layers. So my cards usually have lots of layers to them. And you can skip any of the layers. I know that when my card kits come in the mail, sometimes people are like, I actually took your card kit and made two cards out of it instead of one because they felt like they could get away with uh, with doing that. Now this is just a, a small scrap of soft succulent cardstock and I wanted to put it between the, the seam here and so I'm just going to kind of line that up side to side here and make sure we're kind of straight here and it almost gives us the ribbon effect right so it kind of looks like there's just ribbon coming across here but it's cardstock so it's actually easier than working with ribbon. All right now we got to get into all of the great die cutting Everything else here is going to get die cut and all that good stuff. So let's work on some of that next. We're going to bring in the boss machine again and we're going to do some die cutting. And this time we're going to talk about some different oval situations. Some the same, but some different. This time we're going to be using this big guy right here. So he's totally different. And we're going to do the evening evergreen with this one first. Let me get this on here and we'll run this through. I've used this quite a bit and I have not cleaned it out completely yet. I tend to not clean out all the little bits and scraps from it. So there's probably all kinds of different paper in here. Now when this one cuts out, this is, this is also another double oval situation. I'm trying to get rid of some of my little papers everywhere here. So when this comes out, we get this piece, we get a nice background piece, and we also get another oval. And this oval actually has uh, kind of like an edge to it too. You can kind of see like a rimmed edge around it, which is really cool. So that um, this, this one right here actually gives us, again, two different things to work with, with one die cut. I'm actually gonna bring in some white again, and we're going to die cut this one. I believe we're doing this one again, right? Yes, yes we are. Um, this one is probably the one that I, I reach for the most because it actually layers into all of the other ovals. 
So it kind of makes it super fun that way. So again, this is the this is this one right here. We use it on the first card. And and we get this one just like that again. So I'm just going to set those aside. And we're going to die cut a couple more things. We've got some sprigs to die cut. So let me grab out some sprigs. We're going to use this one in white. And then I've got some gold foil here, gold foil paper. Now this comes from a paper pack that actually has the evening evergreen in it as well. So this would be, um, even, I, I almost used the evening evergreen, but I thought it was too dark and it needed some gold to, to lighten this up. Um, this is how sometimes I work my paper for die cutting. Instead of cutting it through my paper trimmer, I just trim off some paper here and there and I just let it go. So I can get these guys on here. We're just cutting these nice shiny gold foils. All right, so my little machine here is all set up. So we're gonna go ahead and get this cranked through. And I believe we're done with our die cutting for this card. So grab everything off of here. And um, this one is, so get rid of my scraps here. I wanted to say this one also is very delicate. As you can see here, all these, there's lots of little pieces as I pull it up that are gonna just pop off. So a lot of open pieces. I think last week's card also had some, some sprigs, I believe, that were very all open. And I gotta just kinda peel these guys off of my machine. Now, this is kinda nice, because right now, all these little little parts and pieces didn't come out, but they, uh, they actually are intended, intended to come out. So this one just lost one right there. So he's already lost one, so I can't, I can't possibly like just leave all of the rest in and have one hole. So I'm just going to work this through a little bit here just by bending it. I could grab my, my uh, little brush tool, but not necessary. So again, this is kind of an open-ended, um, but just, just delicate enough. You can see it here on the card. Actually, I did leave one in this one just for that little bit of extra gold. And uh, this one's thinking about peeling apart. So we'll just help it along here a little bit. There we go. So there's my little foil sprigs okay and now we are going to be using this uh, oval right here and this is where we're going to do our heat embossing so let me grab all my heat embossing items out got my versamark my sentiment my embossing powder all of the good things get the static off of there so uh, earlier today, as I was making this card, actually, I have a picture of it. I'm going to share that probably uh, at some point here. Um, this is not how this card, uh, I finished the card and then I reworked the card that's in front of you here. So this white layer is actually an extra layer that is on top of another layer. <laughs> And when you see the picture, you'll be like, oh, okay, that makes sense. I, I did the card and then I wasn't quite happy with it. So I recut the oval and I re-embossed the oval and I went in a different direction, entirely different direction. So um, the card's not done till you say it's done. That's what I'm saying. All right, so I've got this uh, powder on here. I'm going to just heat up my heat tool for a quick second before I come in here and make this gold shiny and pretty. Yeah, she's just starting to work. got it all. I think we're good. Let me turn that off and take a look at it here. There's nothing better than gold, I think, on a Christmas card. It's so elegant, right? And there we have it. So that's just like that. And again, we um, it's very easy to do. This These ovals are very easy to work with, which is really nice. So on this oval, I'm actually going to bring in some Evening Evergreen ink. And somewhere I have a sponge dauber. And I'm actually going to darken down, I don't know if you can see on my sample card here, but on my sample card, I did use this oval here, and I darkened down the edges, which almost makes it look like 
an entirely different color of cardstock. I love that so much. This is one of my favorite colors, this evening evergreen. Oh, I'm gonna be really sad when it retires in a couple years. Maybe they'll keep it for forever. I think we could replace shaded spruce. Shaded spruce could go away and this one could stay. What do you guys think? I am evening evergreen fan. Okay, so this is just darkening down the edges. So hopefully you can see, see that how that has worked to darken the edges. Now I could have grabbed out my blender brush too, but I feel like this was probably the quicker, easier way to go. So that is the direction we took it in. All right, so let's bring in my card and we'll start putting all of these pieces together here. Now again, this one, um, actually, yeah, maybe I'll bring in my brush. So you can kind of see that there's little pieces um, here that are still stuck in this frame. So I'm just gonna kind of brush them off here real quickly and remove. Get little shrapnel pieces going everywhere. We'll get out most, we'll get out as many of them here as we can without being too fussy. Get that one. Okay, almost done. They come out pretty good. They're not, um, I can remember dies that we've had in the past that like you could not get the paper out of for anything. It was like terrible. You have to die cut it like three or four times and it was just, oh, it was awful, awful stuff. Okay, I have green pieces everywhere right now. All right, this one again is very open. So there's not a lot to work with as we're gluing. I'm seeing a couple of spaces left over here. So when I glue from the back, I'm actually going to kind of focus on just little bits of glue wherever it seems to be the biggest. And of course, I'm going to do these, like there's kind of like four, four top, bottom, um, and the two sides here have kind of like a bigger area that the glue can go down on, just being very light with the glue. And then I'm actually just going to kind of dot in a couple of spots here along the edges, very, very lightly. I'm trying to not get my fingers in it too. Sticky fingers. Okay, so there we go. Just a little bit of glue, very light application of glue. And this is just gonna come right down here on the card front. And it's gonna look really weird at first because it just looks like too open. Like this is obviously not even close to being finished, right? This just kind of blends in. It looks nothing like our finished card. We're gonna put this one down next and it's gonna layer right back in. This is how we die cut it out. So this is gonna layer back in, but we did deepen the edges really nicely and look at how it makes it pop out. Already some really great color there. Much needed, right? And then we're gonna add in our May this season be filled with peace and joy. Before I do this, I wanna just give you a visual. My original card, I, um, embossed this this exact sentiment in white on the green and I had it on here so we had green with white embossing and, and the rest of the this and I just I wasn't quite happy with it and I already had the ribbon on I had all the flowers and the bling was on and everything and I took off what I needed to and I added another oval in and I'm like mm, yeah we're gonna change this up a little bit and uh, so that's what I did and I was really happy with it when I got done I thought it looked much better having this white cardstock with the gold sentiment than the green cardstock with the white embossed sentiment. Um, so that was a really good solid decision. All right, so I've got my little sprigs here. And again, these are very open. This one's gonna come down here on the side, this little white one. So you've gotta be very careful with the glue application. There's a few spots you can see that are a little bit bigger than others. And I'm not going to fill in every little spot here on this just enough just enough to hold it now normally if you watch me make cards I kind of leave my sprigs really free and I actually just tape them down at the base but for this card I don't have quite as much room to hide that where the tape is going to be so I actually decided that maybe I should glue this a little bit more which is what I did and then I'm going to get creative again with my tear and tape and I am going to add a little bit of tear and tape here as I add these two little gold foil sprigs on. So just enough tear and tape that I'm going to catch both of the ends here. So these are very delicate little guys, right? So just right here, I'm going to catch the ends. So these guys are kind of hold, held in place here by this little piece of tear and tape, which I have to actually now peel up because I'm using this tear and tape and it's going to hold my bow in place too. So this one's gonna kind of come off here and here we go. 
and I just have enough tear and tape left here. And we're gonna make a nice little bow out of our soft succulent ribbon. Now again, on this card kit, the only thing you're not gonna have when you get this in the mail is the heat embossed sentiment. You can heat emboss a sentiment all on your own or just stamp a sentiment in here as well. And this one really doesn't even have to be a Christmas card. This one, I feel like it's not so Christmassy that it has to be a Christmas card. You could get away with doing, making this, you know, a different kind of occasion card as well. So the uh, tear and tape that was still exposed here, holding down my little green sprigs, my green sprigs, the gold sprigs, holding them down, also is gonna hold down my little bow here, which is kind of poofy. Um, but here's my little bow holding that all down, and here is my original. It's very similar. That is card number two. How pretty is that? I am a fan of the green. Love the greens. All right, so that's card number two. We are going to move on to our third and final card tonight. Let me clean up a little bit here quickly again. Move some stuff out of the way. Oh, I forgot the pretty gold thingies. Look at this gold thingies. We have to put these on. These are so swirly and fun. They kind of might remind me a little bit of like non-pareils or those really fancy chocolates that, you know, I like chocolate, right? Everything reminds me of chocolate. This reminds me of those really fancy, swirly, chocolatey, delicious circular disc treats. And um, yeah, I'm going to go with that. Okay. So I just added three of these beautiful little um, and that just, that's, now the card is better, right? Now it's finished. We just needed to get those on there. So we're accenting our gold. We've got just enough accents of gold that it's not over the top. And actually, oh, that's my, my tape. I'm just making some minor adjustments here, right? Okay. So there are my really pretty, pretty cards. Um, and again, Christmassy without being super Christmassy. So different kinds of Christmassy cards. All right, let's move that out of the way and we're gonna bring in card number three. Card number three is like, probably might be my favorite. I always try to try to save like a really awesome one for last. So check out this card. And I actually did use the mittens from a different stamp set, but um, this is gonna be our third way to use these ovals. And when I grabbed out this paper, which um, probably, if you just looked at this paper, you wouldn't say that this was Christmassy in any kind of way. You wouldn't even necessarily say it's wintry, but it kind of reminded me a little bit of like blues, uh, snowman and mittens and such. So I kind of wanted to do cherry cobbler along with this balmy blue. And I think this is a lot of fun. Now this doesn't have to say Merry Little Christmas. This could say something else. You could still use the mittens or not. Um, but I thought this was kind of a fun card for sure. So I took advantage of the Celebrate with Tags stamp set. So we've got this cute little mitten in here. Uh, this is a cling red rubber stamp. And then it goes with the Celebration Tag dies. This makes a really sweet little mini envelope or tag. Um, so here's the, all, all of these good things that you get in this kit. I love it. Um, we'll be using the little mitten die tonight. So I'm just gonna grab that right back out of there again. So we have that handy. And we can start working on our last card. This is so cute. I love this one. All right, so again, we're using a cherry cobbler um, base. We have designer series paper cut for the front of our card. And we're gonna be doing all kinds of other cutting and die cutting and so on and so forth. But let's do our, our big die cut first. So this time we're gonna be using the third oval. So we've talked about all the different ovals in the stamp set. This one actually creates these cutaway hearts, which is super cool. So let's get that one out so you guys can see what that looks like. And I thought it'd be fun when I was uh, designing this card earlier. I'm like, let's try this right on the designer series paper itself. I was gonna do extra layers and I thought, you know what? Let's do it right on the designer paper and see what happens. So sometimes I really experiment while I'm getting these cards created. So I'm gonna actually do my very best to line this up evenly because it is going to be the focal point of the front of my card. So I really don't want this to be crooked in any way. So I've got that centered on there pretty good. And this is so cool um, when it comes out the other end. And if you like to save confetti, this is where you're gonna be starting to save your little confettis, right? Because check out this ring of tiny blue hearts that's left on my cutting plate. Are those not adorable? And here is, and it's kind of hard to see here, but here are all of the hearts that are um, cut out of this paper. 
it's hard to see here. Obviously, once I put the red paper behind it, you can see it really, really well. But this little ring of hearts, just like, it almost melts my heart that all these little hearts are on here, left, left behind. These would be awesome for shaker cards. So if you like to save them, then you're going to want to have something on hand when you use this. Now, I hope you notice that this did not cut out an, an inner oval of any kind. The only thing this did was cut out the cutaway part. And then you can use this oval if you want to, right? So I used it on this cardstock and I cut this out afterwards. So you can get this effect too. You can have an open um, oval by using this one. But if you wanna just use it for the hearts and leave the center, which is what we're doing for our card here, we're just using this one large oval die today. So let's get going on the rest of our die cuts because we do have a few more to do. Lots of oval dyeing today. Bring my machine back in. Set us back up here. Keep my base plate. My, my base plate's a little bit rougher. I like to keep the top plate a little bit cleaner. All right, so we are going to need the, the one that gets the most work out today, our, our little oval here. We're actually gonna be running this through in the cherry cobbler and in the white. So as you use these florets dies, you are really stockpiling up the extra parts and pieces because every time you die cut this one, you're getting two pieces. And we, you know, and if you're mixing and matching, which is what we're doing again on this one, we're gonna do one in red, we're gonna do one in white. Then I've got the opposite for another card, which is kind of nice because then you can you can uh, play with the the, uh, the contrast colors as well. All right, so I think we're good for now with this until we get our mittens. So here's all of those great oval pieces again. This is really awesome. All right, let's see what we got going on here. Now, this is my um, my card base, right? So I could, I could definitely put this just right flat onto my card base. You can see the red. But when I did this, I actually also added some ribbon, which gave this designer series paper a weird thickness. So I ended up bumping this up with dimensionals. So long story short, I needed an extra piece of red to adhere behind this so that it would show up really well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna glue this down right now. And I'm just gonna hit the cardstock. I'm sorry, this is designer paper. I'm gonna just hit the designer paper around the hearts and kind of in the middle. And just make sure that they are all covered here. So that's perfect. And while we're talking about that fun ribbon, I pulled out this balmy blue, this is double stitched ribbon. And it's, it's really interesting. It's got a strip of balmy blue in it, right? And it's got the white, but it's really thick. It's almost like canvassy in nature. So it's a very thick ribbon. And it's not one that's going to look really pretty when you make a bow because it's not it's not blue on both sides. So if you were to like try to, you know, weave it one way and the other, you're going to get a weird combination. It just doesn't really work that well. So I decided that I was just going to wrap a little bit of this along the bottom, kind of give us a little fun edge here. And somewhere I've got my stamp and seal. So I'm just going to bring my silicone mat in, add some of this onto here and then put this on the bottom and wrap it around. There's not a lot of bottom to work with, but it does fit on here, just kind of snug like that. And it just gives it, you can see on my finished card, right? It gives it just a little bit more, something fun. I'm gonna add a little bit of this on both sides here so that I can wrap this to the back. And again, this is very thick ribbon. So if I were to put it on my card base, just flat, it's really bumpy on the bottom, which I did not care for. So I actually decided that this one was gonna get all popped up with some dimensionals onto my card front. Before I do that, actually, before I do that, it was, it was a little bit difficult to put it on the, with dimensionals and then add all these extra little things. So I'm gonna add the extra little things now instead. So we're gonna just put this, this red ring right here in the middle. And again, this is one that we just have to be really careful adding the glue to. Just a little bit here and there. The light hand. Just enough, just enough glue on there, right? So it's not super goopy. And this is just gonna come right here in the middle. Give us that nice red edge. Now on our white one, we're gonna stamp 
with Cherry Cobbler ink. And this is again from that fun Christmassy stamp set called Framed and Festive. I'll move my ribbon out of the way because I'm pretty sure I'd probably get, uh, get some ink in that. So let's go ahead and stamp this. I'm gonna stamp this up a little bit higher this time. So again, I'm kind of, I'm manipulating my card as I go. So this is gonna be up a little bit higher. I think that's gonna work better for my little mittens. Speaking of mittens, these things are super cute. Let me grab them out here and stamp a couple. We are gonna die cut these two. Oh, I hope I have enough scraps here. I might need another scrap. Let me grab my scrap bin. Scrap, please. Okay. I did not take into consideration how large my mittens were. They're pretty large and super awesome. Love them. All right, so we are keeping these just very monotone color, right? We've got white, cherry cobbler, balmy blue, and we are going to be die cutting mittens. And I probably should have done one ahead of time so I didn't have to do both of them, but you guys get to watch me die cut both of them now. So we're gonna do that real quick. Let me bring in my machine one more time. Last bit of die cutting for this. And now I need to find my mitten die. Where did it go? It's over here. Okay, good. Phew. Almost had a panic attack, panic attack right? I wouldn't be able to. I, actually, you guys, if I couldn't find this mitten die, I would fussy cut this mitten out right now. I don't think it would take me super long either. Okay, mitten. Let's get you on here. Stay in spot. Okay, we're good. We got one mitten. I think this red is like iconic mitten color, right? And of course, every time I do mitten a mitten on a card, I think of all my friends that do the knitting and the crocheting and the making of the mittens with the yarn. And I'm like, wow. You guys are so skilled. <laughs> Playing with paper is actually really easy compared to some of the other arts that are out there. So I hope that um, people that think card making is difficult understand that nope, it's really not. It's so much easier than everyone you know thinks it could possibly be. All right, so here is uh, work in progress here. We're gonna go ahead and glue down our stamped little sentiment here. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Gonna fit right back in here. And now what we are going to, I think now I feel confident that I can put this on my card base with my dimensionals and then add the mittens and such on at the very end. So we're getting close to being done here with our cards tonight. I hope you guys are enjoying. I wonder if that's enough. I wonder if that's enough. Yeah, that's probably pretty good. I am kind of sparse with my dimensionals. Let's see which ones need unsticking here. You need just enough to make it work. All right, so making sure our card opens in the correct position, always important before we start adding anything to the card front. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put that on there. So now this is this whole blue layer is popped up, which kind of gives it that little bit of thickness. Super, super cute. And we're gonna actually, we're gonna put the mittens on. We're just putting them on flat. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just dry fitting really quickly to see where I want them. This, um, this one's gonna go on first. So I'm just gonna add some adhesive and pop that on there and then get some adhesive on the next one and kind of layer them over top of each other. And then we're gonna bring in some twine because I feel like you know, we need something really cute, right? So I'm just using a little piece of the white twine here to make a little bow. And just enough, right? Just enough of a bow here to go on our card. Trim that end up a little bit. And this is gonna go on again with a glue dot. I'm gonna just kind of roll that up a little bit there. And I'm just putting this glue dot, um, I'm just picking a spot on the mitten that I think makes the most sense to have a little bow sticking on it. So 
it's kind of cute like right there right so this little bow and the last thing i have is of course some bling right this is the um these are adhesive back sequins and gems so i was looking for something kind of blue in nature so there's kind of i'm trying to see if you guys can see in the light here this is kind of like a purpley this is almost like a fresh freesia color this one looked more pool party but once i put it on my card i felt like the blue sparkly worked really well with the balmy blue and these are actually sequins. So the top ones here are kind of like, a, almost like a pink color gem, but the bottom two things down here are sequins. And I, I found a little spot in my mitten designed to like perfectly add one in. So these are kind of fun and just gives us just enough here for our mitten card. How cute is that? Do you guys feel like this card is Christmassy enough? Like these colors might not be the most Christmassy, but it's kind of a wintry, wintry card. So let's take a look what we got. We got this one. We have our green card, which had the gold in it. Super pretty. And then of course we had, we started out with our birthday card, which is that fun fold. If you missed that, you definitely need to check it out at the beginning. So here are the cards for tonight. I would love to know in the comments, which one is your favorite. Of course, I had to go with some, some good Christmas ones because we're all focusing right now on our Christmas cards. Um, do remember that if you order with me this week using my house code, you will be receiving one of each card kit in the mail for free. I love that so much. I'm gonna check messages really quick. Linda says fun cards. Oh, Christina likes the mittens. Yes. Roxana, thanks. Hi, Roxana. The one with the mittens. Thank you, guys. I, I'm getting some love on the mittens card. And to be honest, that was the third card that I designed today. And usually by the time I hit the third card, and I'm banging these out one after another um, on a, well, this isn't Monday, on a Tuesday afternoon, I come home from my part-time job and I come to my craft room and I'm like, I need three cards to show for a live. So I'm banging them out right in a row. Boom, boom, boom. And by the time I get to the third card, sometimes I'm like, Ooh, I don't know if I've designed something good or if I'm just like, I'm just throwing stuff together. Cause I'm like, I am running out of time. But, um, I really like the mitten card too. So I'm glad you guys think it's sweet. It was the third and final card here. So um, if you get the card kits, I will send you die cut mittens. They won't be stamped. Uh, so you'll have to color in your mittens or if you have you know, something that you can do to create the little mitten card, that would be perfect too. Um, but again, if you want to purchase any of these products, in my online store this week, you'll have them at home when your card kits arrive. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, we have hit our hour, which is where we are with our um, online class format. If you guys have any questions on the ordering process, uh, if you're interested in any of the products, if you have questions, let me know and I'll help you out with that. Um, I look forward to creating some of these card kits maybe for you to get in the mail uh, and next week. I always ship the card kits the week following. So the ordering uh, for this class ends on Sunday, so they go out the week afterwards so just so you're aware there's a little bit of lag time hopefully as you've gotten kits in the mail I know that I've had quite a few people ordering these card kits with me weekly um, and they're coming to you I hope you are enjoying them and I would love your feedback on how amazing they are too so that I can share your good information with other people um, come back I'm thinking tomorrow I'm going to be announcing my November card class in the mail, which is going to be a product based class. So you're going to get product, you're going to get card kits. It's going to be awesome. I've got to work on that a little bit too. So I will be announcing that shortly. Uh, the sign up for that will be through November 10th. So I've got lots of good things coming for the month of November. All right, everybody, that's it for me for today. I hope you are enjoying. Um, tomorrow's Wednesday. We're going to have a color swap card tomorrow on Positive Paper Crafters also. So there's that too. So come back, check out all the good stuff. And until next time, stay inspired, create something beautiful, and share the love. Bye.